converting fractions to decimals and decimals back to fractions. Basically marrying the last two units that we've uh, been looking at all together. Fractions we did last unit and now we're in decimals, how to convert back and forth between them. Okay, first let's take a look at how you convert a fraction to a decimal. There's the easy way. Those are the ones where the denominator is a power of 10. And if you remember the last lesson that we did on multiplying and dividing by, by powers of 10, this is a piece of cake. 3 tenths. Actually, when I say it that way, I kind of just said the answer. But 3 over 10 is the same as 3 divided by 10. And you remember when, when we were uh, talking about the last section, again, dividing by powers of 10, what you do is you look at the number of zeros, and that tells you how many spots you move the decimal. Well, 3 has an imaginary decimal right here. Because there's one zero, we'll move it one spot. And so the decimal moves there, and it becomes 0.3. Put the zero in front to protect it. It's 0 0.3. Simple. So when you're doing this, just think, count how many zeros there are. If there's one zero, then you'll move it one spot. And the same thing for whatever it is, the number of zeros, whether it's one or a hundred of them, one zero, the number of zeros tells us the number of spots we move the decimal. And that's the answer, that's it, 0 0.3. 3 divided by 10 is 0 0.3. 3 tenths is 3 tenths. Done. Um, how would you say this is a fraction? You would say it's three one-hundredths. Well, you can just write it straight from there if you want. Or, follow my little rule here. You look at the number of zeros, and that's the number of spots you move it. There are two zeros, so we'll move it two spots. One, two. So we'll put a zero there, and the desk one's up there. The answer becomes point zero three. You can put the desk, sorry, the zero in front for protecting that decimal. On to this, 18 over 100, same deal, two spots. We're gonna move it because there are two zeros here in 100. So we'll move it two spots, and it becomes 0 0.18. 0 0.18, put a zero in front. Here, we got one zero, so we'll move it one spot. The decimal is here, we'll move it one spot over, we'll get 1.8. Simple. So if you have a question where it's fraction, converting fractions to decimals, and it's already a 10 or a 100 or even a 1,000 or whatever, easy. Those are the easy ones. What if, though, the denominator is not, and like in these two cases, not a power of 10? Well, if you can, try to make it a power of 10. How can you make 5 into 10? Well, you times it by 2. And remember from fractions from before, whatever you do at the bottom, you got to do at the top. So now, this fraction of 3 fifths has become 6 over 10, which we can use our number of zeros equals numbers of spots little trick. 1 zero, 1 spot gives us 0 0.6. How about this? 14 over 20. How can we make 20 a power of 10? You want to mean when I say a power of 10, it could be 10, or it could be 100 or 1,000. We could make this 10 by well, how do you make 20 10? You divide it by 2. Do the same to the top. When you divide 20 div uh, by 2, you get 10. 14 divided by 2 is 7. Well, now it's easy. 1 0 one spot. And the answer is 0 0.7. <clears throat> now some of you might have thought when you saw that, oh I can make 20 into 100 and you can do it that way as well. 20 can become 100 when you times it by 5. Do the same to the top. And you get 100 on the bottom. 14 times 5. 5 times 10 is 50. Plus 20 is 70. Two zeros, two spots, you get 0 0.70. Now, 
are these two answers the same? Yes, they are the same. Remember, after the decimal, you can fill it up with as many zeros as you want. It doesn't really matter. 0 0.7, 0 0.7 million, 0 0.7, it's all the same. So these two are equal. It doesn't matter how you do it. That is the answer. You probably want to just not put in extra zeros, just, just make it nice and neat. So 0 0.7, whichever way you do it for this one, is the answer. 3 fifteenths, is there one step that can take 15 and turn it into a 10 or a 100 or a 1,000? Um, and on, on first inspection, you probably think, no, I can't make this into 10 in one step or make it into a 100. Well, what could you do? What if you divided this by 3? That gives you 5. Do the same to the top. That gives you 1. So now what we've done is we've made it into a number that we know we can change into a power of 10. 3 fifteenths is the same thing as 1 fifth. When well, out with 1 fifth, what are you going to do? Times by 2, times by 2. You get 2 over 10. And 1 zero, 1 spot, 0 0.2 is your answer. So there you are. So far, easy, easy, going from fractions to decimals. What if, though, you get something like this? We are not going to be able to change it, no matter what you do, into a power of 10, like 3 eighths. Some of you might be thinking, oh, if we divide it by 2, we'll get 4, times up by 25. Well, if you divide by this by 2, you'll get 1.5. You get some weird decimal answer. It's not going to work. So if all else fails, you can always use long division. And this is actually the only thing that will work all the time. Long division works all the time to get fractions into decimals. Because again, what is a fraction? It's just a decimal, it's just a division question. Now, this is 3 divided by 8. 8 is doing the dividing. So, in the little wood chopper house, the 8 will go first. It's doing the dividing. 8 divided by 3, sorry, 3 divided by 8, so the 8 goes in front, 3 goes inside. Now you know, this looks weird to you, no big deal, fill it up with zeros. It's, the decimal in, is right here for 3, so we should make, make note of that and put the decimal up there when we do this. Okay, long division, no big deal. 8 goes into 30 three, three times. That gets you 24. When you subtract the 2, you get 6. 8 doesn't go into 6, so you bring down the 0. You get 60. 8 goes into 67 times. 7 times 8 is 56. Space here. Oops. Make some more space here. Come on. All right. I'll just squish it in. You subtract. You get four. Bring down the other zero. You get forty. Eight goes into forty-five times. That gives you 40. You subtract, you get 0. Sorry, it looks squishy, but there's your answer. The answer is 0 0.375. Same deal here, 2 thirds. No easy way to make that, uh, the third, the 3, into a power of 10, so you're just going to use long division. The goofy way that I, I use to show what number goes where is just pretend this 2 thirds fraction is walking and it trips over this little bump here. So this two-thirds is walking and it trips over this little bump. The two falls forward into the log house, trip into the log house and the three is in front. Anyways, whatever way you want to know. Or you can just re look at that two is dividing by three, so the three goes in front. Anyways, 3 doesn't go into 2, so fill it up with zeros. Remember, that's where the decimal was. We put it right there. 3 goes into 20 how many times? It goes in 6 times. 
6 times 3, 18. When you subtract, you get 2. Bring down a 0. 3 goes into 26 times. 6 times 3, 18. You subtract, you get 2. Bring down a 0. 3 goes into 26 times. That's 18. You subtract, hey, wait a minute, I see a pattern developing here. And yes, you can probably see, this is going to go on forever and ever and ever. So this 6 is going to repeat forever and ever. You can go on and do this question forever and ever. Instead, I'm going to use a little trick here. To show that that 6 goes on forever, you draw a line over it. So it's 0 0.6 repeating forever. And trust me, it will go on forever and ever and ever. Okay. Uh, decimals to fractions. You can go the other way around too, and actually it's quite easy as well. Going from decimals to fractions. It's just the reverse. Instead before of going counting how many zeros are and that tells you how many spots to move it, we now see how many spots do we have to move this decimal and make it a whole number? One spot. So the number of spots will tell us the number of zeros we'll have in the denominator. One spot is one zero. So when we move the decimal over one spot, we get eight, and that'll be over a number with one zero, which is ten. Now eight tenths, you know, you can reduce to four fifths. There you go. Let's use that same thinking here. 0 0.9, turning it into a fraction. Move it one spot over, one spot, one zero. So when we move it over one spot, we get nine, over a number with one zero, which is 10. Can't reduce it, we're done. Look at this, 0 0.25. How many spots are gonna move the decimal? One, two. Two spots we move the decimal. 25 is what we get. Two spots, two zeros, which is 100 you can reduce that to one-fourth. I'm going to be pretty generous here and not make you reduce um, them. Either either way would be good. I'm not saying reduce to your fraction the lowest terms. Just change your decimal into a fraction that works. Here, how many spots do we have to move it? There's a decimal. One, two, three. Three spots, three zeros. This gives us 125 over three zeros. 1, 2, 3, that's 125 over 1,000. These last two, we're going to move this how many spots? 1, 2, 2 spots, 2 zeros. So this gives us 175 over a number with 2 zeros, which is 100. And thankfully, like I said, you don't have to worry about reducing in this section here. What about here? How many spots do we have to move the decimal? One, two, three, four, five. Five spots, five zeros. This number then becomes, with the decimal at the end, 675 and a power of 10 with five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Again, don't worry about reducing it. That's it. So here are the six skill testing questions. Remember when you're converting fractions to decimals, you count the number of zeros. That tells you how many spots to move it. When you're moving fractions, sorry, decimals to fractions, other way around, it's the number of spots it tells you the number of zeros. Spots, zeros, zero spots, if that makes sense. Hopefully it did. If not, watch it again and again and again, this video. Bye-bye.